Hey everyone, I wanted to uh, answer a fairly common question that we get, which is around if you're building a social network that has likes and follows, what's the best way to do this both from within the database and uh, how do you make an API endpoint that actually tracks a follow or a like? Um, so uh, with this, I always recommend having some sort of transactional table that keeps track of the like or the follow. They're effectively the same thing. And then we'll build the, the endpoint that basically records that like or follow. So I was doing a previous tutorial where I had products and users. So I'm just going to stick directly with this example. In my user table, I just have myself as the only user. And in the products table, I have a jacket right over here. So if I wanted to record that I like that jacket, I would add a table. And I'm just going to call this likes, okay? And so in the likes table, I just need two database relationships. I need a relationship with the person that liked um, the product and then the product that they liked. Pretty straightforward. So I can just say this user, Prakash, likes this product uh, jacket. Okay, so we make that very easy. And the cool thing about this transactional table is it always has the timestamp uh, around when that uh, th that action took place. Okay, and it's the same thing with follow. Like I could rename this to a follow, and it would say that Prakash follows uh, this brand, for example. Um, but we'll just keep it for likes for right now. So while that's all fine and good, and we can do it manually. The next question is always uh, inevitably, okay, well, how do you then build an API that I can like have my app record that? So if uh, you're using a mobile app and someone clicks um, like on a jacket, how do we record that that has actually happened? So if we go to our API, we're going to go to our API group right over here. I'm going to add a new endpoint and I'll just start from scratch. And I'm just going to say um, like product and I'll hit save. All right, so there's three parts to our no-code API builder. Inputs, which is what the user gives us. The function stack, which is functions that execute. And then the response, which is what we're returning to the front end. Um, for the inputs, whenever you're building an API endpoint like this, you need to, need to take in the two things that are important about the like function. You need to take in who did it, that user ID, and then what product they're talking about. So on the inputs, I'm just going to hit plus and I'm gonna say integer, and I'm gonna say user ID, okay? So that's the user, and then I'm gonna do another one with the product ID. All right, so now we're taking in those two inputs. The next thing that we wanna do is we want to query all of the records from the likes table to see if the like uh, relationship already exists. So if I click on add all records, database request, query all records, I'm going to select the likes table, okay? So um, if I just ran this right now without saving anything, it's gonna return that one relationship over here, right? That user ID one likes product one. But we want to get very specific and we wanna take into account the user ID and the product ID that is being fed, fed from the front end. So by custom query, I can, I can select uh, query all records, I can select this item right over here, add a conditional, and then here in this conditional, what I can say is I want to make sure that user ID equals the input user ID and the product ID equals the product ID coming from the user. So here what I'm saying is let's make sure that the user and the product actually exist in this table because if not, then we're going to go ahead and add it. So I'm going to hit save. And then on the output, and this is important, we actually want to change the return. And instead of returning a list, we only care actually about one record. So I want to change this to just a single record. And I'm going to uh, hit save. All right. So now that that's done, the next step is to do a conditional. And that conditional is to say that if you find something then um, we don't actually need to do anything. But if you don't find something, let's go ahead and add something to the database. So the way to do this is we add actually another function to the function stack, data manipulation. We do conditional. And we're going to go ahead and say this. We're going to say that if likes right over here is equal to null. So for those of you that don't know, 
Null means that nothing was found, nothing at all, not even an empty value, nothing at all. So as long as it is null, nothing was found, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a record to that database table. So if you didn't find anything, I'm gonna say add record. I'm gonna add the record to likes. And then uh, the timestamp is right now or whenever this query is executed. The user ID will be coming from this user ID over here, which is just fine. And the products ID, I'm gonna actually do as the products ID over here. So again, look at all the records. If you aren't finding anything, then go ahead and add that record to and record it as that like relationship in the like table. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So if I look over here, right, the only relationship I have is user ID uh, number one, likes jacket number one. So if I go to the re related API endpoints, if I run this and I say user ID one to product one, actually nothing should happen at all. If I go to that database table, there's no new record. But even though user ID two doesn't exist, uh, actually let's go ahead and create user ID two. Uh, and we'll do this as Michael. And we'll do Michael uh, at email.com, okay? So if I go back to this API and I'm gonna go to like product, in this case, I'm gonna change it to user ID two, which is Michael, he likes product one. So if I do this, right, if I go to that database table and I go to likes, I can see that Michael has now been added here. So it's, it's really that simple. Like there should be, whenever you wanna do a follow or a like, you create a transactional table, which just means that it's keeping track of uh, the transactions or the relationships that happen. And you uh, keep track of the relationships, right? This user ID likes this specific product then you're gonna build this API endpoint that takes those two inputs from the front end and then does this query all records and then this conditional. So I hope this is helpful and I will see you in the next video.